Let's tie the balance leech, another innovative pattern from the mind of Jerry McBride. This is a fantastic pattern to hang under an indicator as it suspends in a horizontal manner just like many natural trout food sources. Give it a try, here's the materials you'll need. I'm now going to tie you one of the most influential pattern styles I've come across and I can thank Jerry McBride who brought you the bionic worm I showed you earlier and it's the balanced series of flies in this case the balanced leech. These are flies designed primarily to fish under indicators although they're great cast and retrieve flies they suspend horizontally they mimic the natural path that most organisms and lakes cruise horizontally not vertically when you hand a, sorry, hang a traditional pattern under an indicator it tends to hang vertically which is effective but not nearly as effective as a pattern that suspends horizontally. And you'll see this hook is a little unorthodox. You can use a standard shank down eye hook. Works equally well. The risk of a down eye hook when you build the fly after balancing it, back to balancing the hook, you run the risk of accidentally obscuring the hook eye with your materials and then you've got a balanced fly that's just simply too tough to tie on. So this down eye, small down eye jig hook the purpose of the down eye allows it to protrude above the body of the fly so you can easily tie it on. And this hook is the Mustad Ultra Point 32833BLN in sizes 10 or 8. It only goes to small as 10s. You can get these uh, on my and Brian's Stillwater Fly Shop. That's stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. Uh, we sell 8s and 10s in packages of 25. Um, so I'm going to place this into the vise. The first thing we're going to do is cut a pin because we use a pin and tungsten bead to tip the fly horizontal. So we're just going to measure this up and the distance you want to trim is from the head of the pin is right above the point of the hook to the downturn eye and then you're going to come in with a pair of side cutters and trim at this point. And be careful you don't fire that discarded pointy end all over the room and this is the kind of step there's the trimmed pin that you would do over and over again so you would trim all of your pins for the amount of flies you're going to tie all at once one of the tricks to getting consistently balanced flies is this doing everything at once production style so your pins are all the same length so now our pin is ready to go and we're going to actually remove the hook from the vise at this time alright I've taken that cut pin and I have slid a tungsten bead, a 764 tungsten bead in this case, onto the pin. You can use 764, 1 8, even as big as 3 16. I tend to like 1 8 and 764 for my balance leeches and my balance flies, but the choice is up to yours. And of course, the colors are endless. There's gold, there's silver, there's black, there's copper. There's lots of different colored tungsten beads available to you now, and I encourage you to use any and all of them. So I've slid this bead onto the pin with the wide tapered end towards the pin head so when you push it forward it envelops over the pin head. And now we're just going to attach our tying thread. And the thread color doesn't really matter. Um, just happen to have some green thread handy here so we're going to use that. And we are going to build up a little thread ramp to push this pin tight against the bead head. And again, just like the pin cutting step, this is a step you would do. You would add the beads to all your cut pins and repeat this process over and over and over again, building up a little inventory of um, beaded pins, if you will. And that's what you do over and over again. And that's complete. I've now placed the Mustad 32833BLN up eye jig hook into the vise, and now we're going to attach our tying thread. And I'm using the hot orange tying thread because the finished head area of this fly, this is the balanced leech olive pumpkin, is uh, hot orange. So we're going to use that to complement the hot orange dubbing that is at the head of the fly. So we've just provided a thread foundation and now we're going to tie on our pin chassis. Make sure that hook stays horizontal. And so there's our pin chassis. What we're going to do is you'll get a feel for this for the different size beads versus the size of the hook. And a 764 on this number 10 hook 
is about you want this pin assembly to protrude out in front of the hook eye so you could fit about one and a half tungsten beads between the back of the bead and the down eye and then we're just going to secure this on that might be a little just wiggle it make sure it's secure and it's it's not super tight because if it's a little out of balance we can wiggle the pin assembly either forwards or backwards uh, to finish the balance process and that's what we got to do next is make sure this is balanced the chassis is balanced so we do a quick whip finish trim and then we'll remove the hook and do the test balance so what I've done is I've taken a little bit of tippet material and I've done a test balance and you can see this is uh, pretty well horizontal and that's what you're looking for either horizontal or slightly head down if you're going to tie a long tailed leech pattern Again, this balance fly philosophy can adapt to anything, minnow patterns, leech patterns, nymphs, whatever you'd like to balance, you can do it. Uh, but this is a leech pattern, so a little bit of a head down orientation is best because the mass of that tail will help tip the fly back a little bit. So they're all done, and if you tie all of your flies using the same proportion, same bead, same pin length tied in at the same spot, all of your flies will balance. They've got to be approximately horizontal. You don't have to get out laser levels or anything like that. But if you get the first one right, all the other ones you tie using the same specifications will balance correctly as well. The hook is balanced and ready to go. One thing you should do on all of them, and again another benefit to doing them in production style where you just build a whole bunch of chassis so they're ready to go, just like pre-weighting nymph hooks if you will for river and stream flies or any weighted situation you want to do. And I've just coated that tie-in area, uh, both where I tied the pin in and the rear of the pin, with uh, some brushable crazy glue. And you let that sit for a few seconds, or you let that sit overnight, wherever you want, and you'd have a whole bin of these built and ready to go. That's the best way. You just sit down one night and production build a whole pile of your chassis for your balance flies, and then you just pull them out. And the rest of the fly is simply like tying any other fly. So that uh, had some, sorry, the... Uh, Super glue has had time to kick and dry, so we're just going to reattach our tying thread. Be careful of the back of the pin. It is sharp and it will cut thread, so you need to be careful there. I'm going to bring the tying thread back up right near the back of the pin, and we're going to tie in our marabou tail. And I like, uh, you know, you've got to look for marabou. Not always easy to find good quality marabou these days, but I like these fibers that have l these Marabou plumes have lots of fibers on the individual um, uh, fibers of the marabou plume. It just gives the illusion of bulk uh, without adding a lot of material. And I've started stripping this marabou plume. I've stripped as far as I can strip, and then I'm going to lose control of the material. So what I do is I take what I've stripped, and I fold it back onto what I haven't stripped, and hold it in place with my left, sorry, my right thumb and forefinger and I just strip and roll like this all the way down to remove the marabou from the plume and what you end up happening if I've done this correctly is a marabou plume that for the most part the tips are relatively even because I like for my leech patterns to use I don't like to tear them to length I might do a few tears of some errant fibers but not the whole plume and I'll have a nice, long, relatively even tail that's going to have great movement in the water. So my tail material is prepared. Now we're going to measure it for length. And for these tails, I like them from the basically the bend of the hook to the end of the pin or the bead. That's how long the tail is going to be tied in. I'm going to transfer that measurement, and that's how long of the marabou I need to tie in. Trim that off and then secure this in place down the bend of the hook, making sure that sits on top. Have a look at the tail. If I've got a few errant fibers, you can pinch those away. There we go, we've got a nice, you know, reasonably even length tail. It doesn't have to be perfect, just lots of nice movement in there. And you can always just stroke those tail fibers together just to keep them in control for the rest of the tying because you can see how quickly that slims down. We're going to bring the tying thread forward just in front of the hook point 
And then we're going to add some flash to the tail. And depending on the color scheme you're using, it can be crystal flash, it can be flashaboos of varying colors, like for example a claret tail or burgundy. I tend to put rather holographic mylar into the tail. On this fly, I'm using the 6904 flashaboo. This is the UV pearl or ice blue uh, pearl. We're going to take two strands and tie those in along the hook along either side. So I've taken two strands here, okay, and I'm moisten them to keep them together. And we're just going to tie them in on top. I'm going to secure one set of strands down one side of the hook and another set of strands down the far side. So my, my flash, if you will, runs parallel along either side of the tail. And then I'm just going to trim the tips of this flashaboo just a little bit longer than the tail. Probably very hard to see that on camera just because of the... But if I turn it a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of flash. The light's catching it there. There's actually flashaboo in there. You don't want to overdo it. Two strands per side is fine. You don't want this thing to look like a Las Vegas street sign or something like that. Now the body is just simply dubbing from one end of the fly to the other. So what we're going to do is bring that tying thread forward of the hook point, pull down about four inches and form a small dubbing loop and secure that back to the base of the tail to close up the loop right at the tail and then carry that tying thread forward right up to the hook eye. For the body I'm using two materials. I'm using some Arizona Simi Seal and Dark Olive and it's going to have a little ball of dubbing at the front hot orange ice dub or diamond dub. Okay, So you've got to kind of look at this and a little experience you'll learn how to load the loop uh, so you have the right balance of materials. And of course you could form one loop full of olive semi seal, the dark olive semi seal, form it, wind it, tie it off, and then another loop of the um, ice dub or diamond dub. And we'll just get that nice and compact there and then come in with a couple of pinches of the diamond dub. And this is just to give the fly a little bit of an orange hot spot. And many of the lakes I fish in the, the prairie region of Manitoba, I do a lot of my hosted trips, some magnificent stillwater fly fishing there. Uh, the fathead minnow is a prominent food source and when the males get all dressed up for spawning in their colors, they're this dark olive with uh, their sort of their head the gill area uh, has little uh, hot orange or bright red accents uh, to attract the mate. So we're just going to spin this tight Roughen it up with our hands, taking the errant fibers out. You'll find that the diamond dub tends to, or the ice dub tends to spin a little tighter, but we can brush that out. Again, it's more for the color than the, the mobility comes from the, mo the semi seal. Just a fantastic dubbing for still water flies. My congratulations to John Romer for his dubbing mixes, they're excellent. So we're just going to wind this forward, one wrap right in front of the other. I'm trying to gauge this so just as I reach the down eye of the hook that my olive dubbing ends. It'll be a bit tight here and oh, not too bad and now my hot orange dubbing begins. You just want a few wraps. We're just building a little hot orange whoops I'm off the dubbing tool there a bit happens from time to time. Reinsert it. Give it a couple more twists to make sure I haven't lost any tension. And then, whoops, bring this right up behind the bead. Tie her off. Trim. And now we're going to head cement this. And if I try and put head cement or any kind of adhesive here, I run the risk of gluing all the dubbing down, which I want to brush out. So I'm going to let the thread be my medium and transfer the adhesive, in this case brushable super glue that I've applied to the tying thread. I'm going to wrap that in right behind the bead. 
and whip finish. Because you've got the glue in there, two or three turns is ample, and that hot orange tying thread complements that dubbing at the front. So now you can see why we used, you might have said, why are we using hot orange thread on an olive body fly? So the tying portion of our balanced leech is complete. And now we want to just further enhance the leech-like profile. And there's a couple things you can do. The first step is to take Velcro and just brush and aggravate the dubbing along all sides of the fly. Just give it a good back and forth and brush, brush, and basically on all four sides, top, bottom, and sides, all the way along. You can see we're pulling that nice effect is that orange dubbing kind of now pulls out and flows back, puts a little orange right on through through the dubbing. Okay? And it looks, you know, that's that's good enough to fish, but it looks still a little a little wiry. And and that's the, the challenge of these mohair blends is how do you how do you get them to flow and uh, move along the fly a little better? And uh, you can style the dubbing using boiling hot or near boiling hot water. So now with the water prepared, you're going to bring in your fly. I've attached it to my hackle pliers. A pair of hemostats will do. And you're going to dunk it, just the body, into that hot water for a few seconds. And that's going to style take the pliers off so I can get a better grip on it and style and flow your dubbing fibers back. And you can see how they've all styled. I've got a couple of errant ones here so if they don't want to play, adios. And there you go. You've got a nice styled leech. And when this dries that's all going to flow back. And that's a great tip for you to use whenever you're dealing with mohair based flies. Style them all at the end of the tying process. So there's the completed olive pumpkin. A great variation using the balanced fly philosophy. For more information on fly fishing, in particular still water fly fishing, including tips, techniques, and other fly patterns, don't forget to visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Of course, you can find me on Facebook and follow the conversation on Twitter. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future fly tying video.